What I mean by that is, is find the will of God for your life because it is a map. The Word of God itself is your map. It's a light unto your path, the Word says. And it is your map. Keep your lane. Do you ever see those signs? You see, in every nation I go to, there's some sign telling people to keep their lane. Why? Because people drift out of their lanes and they, in other people's lanes. And that's dangerous. You want to stay on target, stay on path, run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Marked out means there are parameters, there are boundaries, and God has a perfect will for your life, and He's already written down those boundaries. And you need to find out what it is. This is all part of your running. Keep your lane. We saw forsake, we saw run, now we see the letter E, envision. Envision. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to focus on Jesus. Very specifically, these verses detail the aspects of Jesus that we need to focus on. We need to envision Jesus, but there, elementally, we're going to see three things here that we envision. Number one, it says in the verse, He is the author and perfecter of our faith. In the King James, it says finisher. Perfecter is also the same. Which means He is writing your life story, and He's also planning on finishing your life story. My wife and I were talking about this this morning. We were dealing with some issues and some problems, and we are we're in the middle of kind of an awkward situation because of someone who's not finishing a simple thing. And 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 we can't because it's a favor being done for us. We can't say, "Hey, would you just finish it?" Because you know you cannot look a gift horse in the mouth, is what my mother used to tell me. You know what that means, right? That farmers, if you gave someone a horse, when you buy a horse, you check its teeth to tell the quality of the animal. And so therefore, if you give a horse to someone, you don't look at its teeth because it's a free gift. It doesn't matter the condition of the animal. That's where that expression came from. And so we can't do that, but this person, all they had to do was a couple of little things, and they could have put our lives at rest and know that oh, our plans are settled. But they didn't finish it. And I think of what Ecclesiastes says, that the end of a thing is better than its beginning. Don't you love finishing a task, finishing a job? But you know that God is going to finish your life. He's going to make it perfect. He is the perfecter of our faith. He's the author. And when we envision Jesus, this is how we're going to get free. Remember, we forsake, we run, but now we're envisioning Jesus as the author. We understand that He is responsible. Every day I wake up, I say, Lord God Almighty, You are the author of my life. You are my source. Everything comes from You. I don't have anything that doesn't come from Your hand. And therefore, You are the highest authority. And for me to second guess your plan and your will for my life is absolute absurdity. I'd be an idiot to try to think that I could write the book of my life better than the author and the perfecter. Number two, he endured the cross because this is what we need to envision. You want to be free, this alone can do a great job at setting you free. When you get a revelation of what Jesus suffered on the cross for you, when you get a vision and you can envision Jesus, His suffering, His pain, you want to be free? Get Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ and just stare at it. Watch it. See what Jesus did for you. See the pain and the suffering and the anguish. And we need a vision. We need a constant vision. In fact, I have this vision every day. Every day I look at the cross. Wherever I'm going in my life each day, I go by way of Calvary. I go past the cross and I look again. Well, that's just kind of morbid. Why do you have to keep focusing on death? I want something more upbeat, more positive. Why do you have to always think negatively? Because it's my strength. And because Jesus did it so that we could be free. I cannot think of anything more positive for my life than the cross of Jesus Christ. 
I can't think of anything more beautiful as a gift given to me than the cross of Jesus Christ. Than the shed blood of the Lamb. And I need to envision it constantly. And if we want to be free, if you want to be free from the weight and the sin and these things that you just seem you can't break away from, I'm telling you, this is how you do it. Number three, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, the Bible says that he's sitting at the right hand of God right now and he's praying for us where he ever lives to make intercession for us. That means right now, at this time, exactly at 732, he is busily praying for you right now. He's looking at you in this room and he's telling the Father, bless those people, set them free tonight, set them free. Let these words, look, Father, can you please, please, He's interceding for us. He's praying for us. He wants what's best for us. And if you envision the fact that He is carefully interceding for you, you will make careful choices in life. If you envision that He is the author and the authority of your life, if you envision that He endured the cross and paid a price for you, then you're going to be less likely to make poor choices because you don't want to take for granted or disrespect what he's done. And these are the things he's done. He endured the cross. He sat down at the right hand. He rose from the dead. Very important. And we stay focused on this. And why must we envision these things? The scripture continues. Consider who have endured such opposition from sinful men. Why? So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I'm telling you, when you lose a vision of what Jesus has done for you, it's so easy for you to get bored. And boredom is a name that we can give to the anointing of Satan. When Satan is near you, his presence manifests in boredom. And that's a revelation for a couple of you. You need to hold on to that. When you sit down, bored. That means the devil has sought to sift you like wheat. That means the lion is crouching at the door at that very moment and your eternal soul may be at risk. When I get bored, I get scared. I'm frightened with boredom now. Since I've gotten this revelation, and I realize don't get bored, it's to do something. Do something productive. Do something right. Do something good. I can't help but that David, think that David was laying on his bed in the palace eating his Godiva chocolate out of the golden bowl and got bored. Wish I had something to do. There's nothing to do. At least out on the battlefield, I'm busy all the time. And splish splash, splish splash, splish splash. And I found that every time that I have a season in my life where I'm just bored. If I don't do something for God at that time, I will fall into sin. It always follows it. As some of you are younger, you don't have the years that I have in Christ, but after 26 years of following Jesus, I'm able to see some patterns evolve and some things that have caused me to be able to be qualified as an elder and as a teacher to explain to you, look, guys, this is what's going to happen. I know you can't quite see it yet, but because I've seen it through a quarter of a century, this cycle repeating again and again and again, and me screwing it up a thousand times, I can tell you this is what happens after this. But as long as I have a vision, I do not grow weary and I do not lose heart. As long as I envision what Jesus has done for me and keep focus on that. Very important principles. We go to the final E. We saw F-R-E. Now the second E, endure. Everybody say endure. Do you know the Bible says that he that endures to the end will be saved? The ultimate freedom is salvation. Salvation from what? The lake of fire. How many of you want to be free from the lake of fire? It is impossible for you to be free from the lake of fire if you do not endure. Because only those who endure to the end will be saved. Hebrews chapter 12, 7 8 says, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons for what son is not disciplined by his father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. One translation says you become bastards. I like that word. 
Because it really lets you know what you become if you don't submit to the, to the fatherhood of God over you. The correction, the direction. And hardship comes as discipline and we have to endure. Difficulties come. We're in the midst of some, some trials right now in my family and we have to take care of things. But you know what? They, they, it's good news. It says rejoice in tribulations. And I know that's kind of hard and it doesn't jive well with your natural mind. Why should I be glad because I'm going through trouble? Because its outcome will always be positive if we endure. And you grow, you get stronger and stronger, and God's blessings increase. But you know, it is your choice to endure or not endure. God treats us as His sons and daughters because we have been adopted by the blood of the cross of Calvary. And we are now part of the family of God and we must endure the process through which God will make us all better. Remember, He's preparing you for eternity. Everything here on earth is classroom. He's getting us ready. He's preparing us step by step. And so it stands the reason that if He's going to see you become worth something, he has to put you through a refining process of difficulties and trials and hardships. And we're going to endure it and endure to the end. So we've seen four things here that we need to do to be free from the sin that so easily entangles us. Number one, forsake. Number two, run. Number three, envision. And number four, endure. God wants you to be free. He wants to set you free. I want us all to stand on our feet. I'm in obedience to the Lord. I'm going to do exactly what God told me to do. And all He said is to lead you in a prayer at the end of this message. Because some of you need to be set free. And what I'm going to tell you about Jesus is simple. He will never turn His back on you. He will never reject you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And no matter what you've done, no matter what's happened in your life, no matter what deviations you make, you might have lost some battles, but as I said in the introduction to this message, you will not lose this war. Because greater is He that is in you than he that is in this world. And even when you are faithless, He is faithful because He cannot deny Himself. God is greater than your own heart. God is greater than your own mind. God is greater than anything. And if you just trust Him, if you just let go and trust Him, He wants to set you free. You might need to forsake something. Maybe physically you can't do it right now, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, you can right now make the choices that will empower you to forsake these triggers in your life, these things. What I'm talking about is good old-fashioned repentance. You have sinned in your life. You have these habits that you've kept. You have these little secrets that you've kept. I'm telling you, I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God in this room. He's come to you to deal with you as a father deals with his child. And he's angry with you because he loves you. And his heavy hand is on you. And he's pointing to these areas and he said, it's, it's enough. It's enough. You've gone too long without taking care of this situation. You've gone too long without tidying up this area of your life. And that's why He's here tonight. He's here to set you free. And this is the thing. All you need to do is let go. All you need to do is forsake it. We're going to say a prayer tonight. And the prayer is the same prayer that we pray when we get saved. Because guess what? We need to get saved every day. It's all by the blood. It's all by the cross. If we want to be free, we forsake, we run, we envision, and we endure. And as we envision, we see the cross. And so let's go right now. With your eyes closed, we're going to the cross. I pray that God gives you a spiritual vision right now. If you've never had a vision of the cross, I pray the Holy Ghost would open your mind's eye in this moment, in this night, by the anointing of the Spirit, to show you what Jesus has done for you. To show you the sacrifice. To show you the pain. The great price that he's paid. 
And the reason he did that is so that you could reach back 2,000 years into the past and take from the eternal dimension the release of power and the conquering force of his death on the cross to break the pattern of sin in your life today. That in a moment, in an instant, you can be set free. 